Okay, this is uh, a hard key bass re review. It's actually part two of my first one when I had a slightly different gear. Um, so what you notice is I've, I, I have four hard key, four hard key uh, speaker tabs, whereas before I used to have two and then two XL, so they're a mismatch, and now I have them all matching. Um, the reason I wanted to update um, these two the high drives is because the XLs are just way too heavy, <laughs> way too heavy. So I actually like the XLs, the, the sound of them, I, I actually like them better sound wise, but they were too heavy, so they had to go. And the XLs, I got them around with this wheel cart that I swear that Harky issued back in the late 90s, but they have no record of it, even though it's made with the same material. I can't prove that that was issued by Harky, but I swear, I feel that it is. Anyway, <clears throat> um, we'll, we'll go over the head, the, the rack here. I have a Furman power conditioner. I have the old Korg tuner. I have the old Alesis um, 3630 compressor. has a, a peak and compressor and limiter with, with a gate. And uh, the newer ones don't have dual channel. And dual channel is good for me since I got two heads in the rack. Um, then I have my LH1000 Harky head. Which I paid $4.44. I talked to seller down on eBay. It was brand new. Then I have a used SVT 8 Pro, which I got on the talk base form from one of the guys on there. And I, I think I paid $7.50 for that. It was a pretty good deal. Uh, use uh, all four cabinets are used. I have uh, three four tens, which one comes in a combo, and then a 15. Originally, what I originally wanted was four 410 cabinets all across but since I already have three I decided uh, just keep the 15 because if I wanted to update update that to uh, four tens I'd have to first sell this one and I would only get around 253 for it used and then with shipping uh, you know it just kind of prices out of the market so I decided since I got three to leave the 15 on there and then I have this combo amp. Um, originally, this I found this in a pawn store. Originally, it had a LH500 in it, and the whole combo looks to have been stored in maybe a storage unit or a, or a shed outside. Uh, the um, it was pretty weathered, beat up. It, it had, you could tell that it had seen a lot of gigs, and so not knowing what year it was made and how long how long it's been you know how to what extent it's been abused I just had a bad feeling about it, so I thought let's sell that put the money into something uh, you know that I that I know and trust a little more than trust trustworthiness being something new so I sold that head for 180 bucks and that was probably a pretty good price that I got out of it I turned around and I found this LH 1000 on eBay it was mark being marketed as a, a demo or or uh, previously used but it still had a 12-month a warranty and the thing about that whole deal is you know it said that it was used for industry testing probably something like you know a pro using it as a base clinic then uh, as advertised on eBay it was repackaged reboxed and then sent to me as I bought it the thing about it is I had, and I paid what was it 367 Oh, three, yeah, three, 370, 376, that's what I paid for it. And the thing about it is, when I got it, being an ex-shipping clerk, I could tell initially from, from the inner carton that it hadn't been, that the tape hadn't been broken and resealed. There, there was only one strip of tape on it. And then I got into the, uh, into that inner carton and found the plastic was, it was a factory, you know, first time uh, factory plastic wrap on that so what I concluded was that uh, you may or may not know that the major retailers all have um, an agreement to not sell below a certain price point with their products which is why if you go to Guitar Center Sam Ash um, who else Guitar Center Sam Ash Sweetwater um, Z, Z, Z sounds whatever they are they all, if, if you look at this, it, it's all like five nine, uh, four ninety nine for this head. They all have cookie cutter price uh, pricing, 
and it's very uniform and, and I started asking around and I found out that it's because they agree to not sell below a certain price point so what I figure happened with with this head because when I got this head it was brand new and what I think's going on, and, and I won't mention the seller because I don't want to get them in trouble, and, and I want to want to make sure that these deals are available for everybody. But but here's a here's a helpful hint: if you can find a demo, you may not get a demo. What what I think they do, they advertise them as demo or previously used for industry testing standards, blah blah blah, so that they can sell them below that that uh, agreed price point. So needless to say, I was quite ecstatic to get this at, at a demo price, and it was brand new. And but but word to word, word of caution, uh, they do sell demos out there, so you may get one of those too. But uh, th this was even a, even if it was an actual demo, it was way better than what was in there. So so I got that. I got I got I paid. They wanted three hundred dollars for this combo at the pawn store. I didn't have any money, so I brought in a uh, a handgun that I had. It was kind of a collectible handgun. It was just a German Walther P1 pistol, which. Uh, was used by the police and then surplus. I, I bought it up years ago, and they looked at the value and determined it. I paid three hundred dollars for the gun. They wanted three hundred dollars for this combo, so I thought, well, money-wise, maybe maybe the gun's worth a little bit more. But I'm not. I wasn't out any money, so they said it was worth like five to six hundred now. So I said, let's trade, and, and they did it. So I did it. Uh, now originally, like I said, I wanted all four ten cabs. I didn't want no combo. I don't like combos. However, the great thing about this combo is it sits right in my system, and if I want to go and and jam with some guys, uh, you know, short of like you know a venue where, where I might might need all this, I think the local venue would be hard pressed to get it all on stage. Uh, all I have to do is pull this combo out and, and run it with me, and I, I take my whole tone with me because my pedal is pretty much mirror. The, uh, the rack except for the EQ and uh, the EQ down on the pedal sounds so good that I've never felt the need to put an EQ in the rack which could fit here or just move this down and put it up so I didn't want to do that so that's that's how I ended up with this it's sort of a compromise but because I'm not a pro it, it makes a whole lot more sense to, to have it arranged like I do um, in my black metal band that's what I use the SVT 8 Pro 4 and I have uh, you know a 610 over there Ampeg cab and along with that I, I use distortion I got the, the MXR bass distortion pedal which is pretty good I looked around at all the distortion pedals and this one for, for the money was was in, in my ballpark and does the job so I guess we can fire this up now you can hear it um, as I I guess I should go with the pedals what I have is I have a base stereo course so it has two inputs so I can run both uh, stacks I guess you could call them uh, at the same time in stereo I, I, I really think and I just want to say a comment on people that call their their stuff base rigs I, I think this qualifies as a base rig I think that if this here on the right was was taken out of the equation what I would have would be a base stack, not a base rig, it's just a base stack. If, if all you had was this much, it's just a half stack. But with all this combined together, the fact that you're running two heads in stereo, I think that qualifies it as a base rig. I, I think it's a little pretentious of people that, to call their, their, their practice amp, for example, their base rig. <laughs> but that's just me. Um, you know, I, I, I I started playing, I think, 1983, you know, and, ba and back in my day, if, if you played an out-of-town show, a string of out-of-town shows, we didn't call that a tour, we called that an out-of-town show, and, and nowadays you got all these bands, they're going on tour because they're, they're playing, you know, a bunch of shows in, in their city and then a, a couple out-of-town, that they're calling that a tour, that's, that's what I'm getting at, Let, let's keep it real, guys. Anyway, enough of my uh, soapbox there, we'll go ahead and, and hear how it sounds. Strap the camera down here. I'm gonna fire up these hard keys. I have to warm up a little bit because they got a tube in there. It doesn't take long. 
Unfortunately, we're not going to let you go to the 8 Pro. So I don't want to have to plug it in. volume because you have so many cabs and you can evenly distribute the, uh, the headroom load to it. And that's, that's what I really like. You can feel them give, you can feel them pushing air, but uh, they don't break up. Basically, I, I realize that David Ellison has all this stuff. I, I guess I, I, I guess I probably sound like him now because I have all the gears, whereas before that wasn't the case. But uh, he does have a good tone. And what I like about these, the reason I didn't go with the uh, the hard key kilo, the one the one thousand watt kilo, is because, like David Ellison says in one of the videos, you got a, just a simple amount of controls. And, and I found in the past, the more controls you got, the the you know the more you tweak your sound, the, the less happy you are with it. So this this really does work out great. Here 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 you can hear it without the EQ. I do several bass cover videos where, and I've covered about, I think, three, maybe four Megadeth covers, and I'll be working on more. But that's what it sounds like. state of my rig. Any questions? Let me know.